So this is my grandma, Linda Cassicelli. I'm interviewing her. And how old were you? Vietnam? Yeah, Vietnam. That was from when I was six. Started when I was about 17. Okay, and then where do you, where did you grow up? Roseville, Michigan. Okay. And then, what was the first time you remember hearing about the Soviet Union or the USSR and its conflict with the United States? Well, probably in the early 60s. Well, no, I think even earlier than that. Probably in the, maybe the, well, maybe it was the early 60s. Because I'm thinking now that, that it was probably, um, was when they put a, a Sputnik was, um, uh, it was a space missile into the, into the, uh, to shot it off the earth. <laughs> so that was probably when I knew that we weren't friends as countries. Yeah. That they were trying to do a space race as the same as we were. Like, what did you think about com communism? They were totally different from us because they were socialized. You didn't, everybody was equal. And you really didn't own things, from what I remember, from what I was told. So, um, yeah, they were mean, evil people, from, you know, from what I re So, the first thing, like, you remember hearing about, like, communism and, like, the Soviet Union was the space race? Yes. What did you, like, think of it? And, like, what did it really mean to you? The space race? Yeah. Um, probably who would have had the world power. What did your parents think of, like, all of this? Of the... Of, like, uh -huh. the Soviet Union and, like, communism and everything? Well, when they were totally against it, and knew the United States would be... We, we were all against it so much that we ended... You know, those are what wars were, are still being fought over. Is that we fought ourselves against England so we could become independent and we could also have freedom not only in our country but other countries and not have a dictatorship. And that's really what's happened at the Soviet Union level is that you have somebody in power that just tells you what to do. You can never talk about uh, you never be against, uh, well, you couldn't be against anybody. You had to uh, always be for them, for, for them meaning the, um, meaning the government. Whatever they said, you had to abide by. Yeah. So now I'm going to move into the civil rights movement. Who are some civil rights leaders that you remember, like, hearing about on the TV? Or did you Martin, see them at, like, Martin, at, on a television? No, Martin, Martin Luther King. And then, like, what did you hear about Martin Luther King? That he wanted to free the black people. And that we talked about uh, having people having rights just because, you know, whether it was a woman or a or the color of your skin, people were to be treated equally. Did you hear about the marches and like the sit-ins in school and stuff? Oh yes, I I was on a college campus when we would have actually people would have a, a rally that they would be outside of the campus at the college and they would be a communist. Oh wow! And they were communists. Pre they were preaching the communist dialogue, and so you would have the people that would either be, you know, obviously pro, and they became proactive, and they, you know, they, I would see them on campus all the time. Yeah. And one of them happened to be my um, uh, political science teacher. So yeah, that was that was really something yeah. to see him, and he was leading it. Oh wow! And so yes, but we also had Black Panthers, which was a big group in the Detroit area. 
uh, that they were out there also doing their own marches for the blacks. But they were really like soldiers that they they were also um, fighting for their own rights, but not like an equal right like Martin Luther, where who was doing kind things. Yeah. These people were against everybody. I mean, against the the social people. Well, I'm not socialist, but uh, the everyday people. Yeah, they the wanted rights people. for blacks, and they didn't care who they stepped on. Yeah. So you were like, so you remember some parts being like peaceful and then some parts being more violent? Oh, yes. Yeah. In 1968, we in Detroit, there was actual movements and. Yeah. Uh, Did you learn about the Detroit riot? I lived through it. Yeah. And when I say lived through it, I actually lived by Love and Mile and Gratiot and I. At one point, uh, tanks, army tanks would go down Gratiot, which led all the way down to Detroit. And uh, you could you could stand there on the side of the road and see the army tank after army tank going into the city of Detroit. Oh, wow. To stop the protest, because that's really what everybody was doing. They were protesting, but none of it was... And that's where Martin Luther King came with the march. He was trying to tell everybody, let's do a peaceful protest. Yeah. As opposed to fighting against each other. You said you were a teenager in the 60s? Yes. Okay, and then what did you do for fun? Fun, we went, oh gosh, we went to dances. And a lot of dances were at schools. There were places that held, like, a VFW. Uh, There were places, uh, halls that were just for, that had live bands that you would go and uh, go dancing. Some of them were, yeah, they were, they actually, that's exactly what they were, was halls. Yeah. A banquet hall. And you would just go there and they'd have, uh music playing sometimes there would be a live band but we were also very lucky because that's when motown music was so big yeah and that's why a lot of us are such that were say my age and maybe 10 years older this is when it started the music and so we were really for detroit people that i was born in detroit and I always have had a love for the city. And so to go there and hit it with Stevie Wonder. Yeah. You know, you might go to a con- it but we didn't have big concerts. These people would actually go and you go to a. Wait, you just cut out. Okay. Okay, so, you're good. You're uh, good. about Motown did you so who did you like listen to you said Stevie Wonder because he was just starting he was only like um I have to say like only like 10 years old and maybe even younger so oh wow when he really started yeah um Smokey Robinson and the Miracles but uh, the Four Tops Martha and the Vandellas was the very first song, album, and I bought an album. And they're her songs, her music still today, Dancing in the Streets, is, yeah. a, is a classic popular. song. That will, that will always be, I mean, it's just people are dancing in the streets. Yeah. Uh, Pixies 3, uh, it wouldn't be uncommon to have some of these, because there wasn't, there was like, um, 
One of the big things on TV was American Bandstand. American Bandstand, as opposed to Soul Train, later on, probably in the 70s, started with, on TV. But the one in the 50s and 60s would teach, would have people dancing. And so everybody was watching it because they wanted to learn how to dance, that all the popular people were dancing. So you'd do, learn how to dance, and then you'd go to these dances, and everybody would be like, oh, we did line dances. Um, yeah, we did. And if you were from Detroit, you really did line dances. So that was the, Aunt Carlene and I danced, we're two years apart, but we would dance totally different. Want to know about the Vietnam War and things? Sure. I don't know if that was on your... Yeah, it is. It's the saddest time because guys would leave they would quit school they weren't even old enough and they were in high school and they would go off to war and we all had lock we had lockers a through z you know and you get assigned them say for three four years so you're like so you know where everybody's at where they go to get their because yeah to get your books and stuff you'd see them well then you'd see the guys that were leaving to go off to war because they they actually voluntarily joined and they had to probably get, I think they had to get their patient parents permission but they never came back because they got killed and so when you would see that time and time again you were like yeah it made you sad that you were like I don't want anybody to go to war because it seemed it was a war that we were fighting about um that we didn't all know, we didn't know what people were even fighting about because it was we were fighting for other people's freedom. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. But a lot of our guys got killed. We had guys, we had people still still here protesting. They would uh, burn their. Um, they had to register for. When you turned 18, you had to yeah. to be mentor that you had to register for the draft. And they were burning their draft cards right in the streets. So, um, and then the, I remember at high school that we would actually, we would have a bake, uh, parents would bake cookies and we'd have metal tins that we would have at the school and I would help package the cookies that we would send off to the soldiers at war. And it was, uh, they were packed, cookies were packed, but you had to use popcorn because plastics was not invented yet. Oh. Yeah. So that's why we had metal tins. We didn't use paper. We used um, metal, metal so they didn't get crumpled. And then we had to put popcorn in there just so, not, not, um, yeah, so they didn't get all broken. Yeah. And then we would have also package up um, hygiene kits for the guys, that kind of thing. And so, yeah, it was a very sad time. And then I had friends that went off to the war, very close friends. And to this day, I'm still friends with them, and some of them have passed, have died. How do you, how did you feel like when your friends were at war and you were hearing like on the news what was happening? Oh, it was scary. It was so scary because we would see the bombing in Vietnam. We would see clips from uh, news reporters, what was going on there. And you had no idea if your friends were dead or alive. Um, actually, Grandpa, his, uh, Papa, his friends went off to war. And today, two of them are still alive, two friends, but one was killed. And another one was my good friend, Sue. Her husband, Jim, was in the Marines. Oh, wow. And, and he was there in Vietnam. And he had to fight these people. He was in combat. That's what a Marine did. They went right in and... Uh, like 
So he lived through that, but he also got sprayed with called Agent Orange. Yeah, we learned about that. He got sprayed with it. Oh, and did it affect him later on in life? And Yeah, that's what killed him. Oh, wow. Yeah, he had to have a... Yeah, it gave him cancer when he was like 50. Oh, wow. He died when he was 64, but it was all from Agent Orange spray. So those chemicals were... They were to put out fires, but they also did so. Veg, that was for the vegetation, but it, so we know what the vegetation today does to people. Yeah. So when so, the war finally ended, like, what were you feeling? Oh, ecstatic. But it came so late. It was years and years later. Yeah. I mean, it was this is. 68 was the hype of things. We had, like I said, the riots in Detroit. But those were, those were created because of the war. Everybody wanted war to stop, and it was war against each other. Yeah. Uh, what did you do when you heard that war was over? Well, um, celebrated. I don't know how I celebrated, but I mean, <laughs> just ec- ecstatic that it was finally that people were coming home and that the war was over. Yeah. This is like now. So, what is your name? Linda Casaselli. And then, what was your maiden name? Linda Stephanitis. And how old are you? I am 73. Woo! And yeah. then, what is what was your family background and your educational background? I have two years of college. My family background is that. I am a oldest of seven kids, so I uh, I was the only one that ever went to college out of the seven kids, the only one that wanted, had a desire to even go, and I actually wanted to become a doctor, but at the time, there, it just, I didn't, there was no money to... Yeah. To go on to, to even, I, so I decided I was going into nursing, and then in between, I ended up getting married and raising a family. And you're not working now, obviously, right? No, because I retired. <laughs> yeah. And then you're living in Clinton Township. Actually, I live in Macomb. Oh, sorry. Yes. It's a difference. It's the other, it's north of all road. Um, Yes. And the big thing is women's lib started at the same time. So there were, Gloria Steinem was great. She was the president of women's lib for for the now (laughs) National Organization of Women. Yeah. And that was started back in the late 60s. So women were out. So when men were out fighting for their rights, women were fighting for theirs too. Yeah. And then, did you know Papa during wartime or no? Yes. Oh, you did. I met. Yes, because he was out of his four, five friends. He was the only one that uh, they all went down to join the service, and, and he they did thought it. they would all join together. Well, when. Papa, they looked at him, and they and uh, he had a problem with his legs, so they decided that they wouldn't keep him. But they took his friend, and they go, "You're going here, 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 and here." So one had to go army, one went navy, one went air force, and the other one went marine. And then Papa stayed. Yes, and so he stayed. But I wrote all those guys' letters, and one, and Sue's husband said, he goes, Linda wrote every Aww. day. I didn't realize, I knew I was writing letters <laughs> to the guys, but that was my big thing, is that I thought if they're going off to war and fighting for us, they have to have, you know, it was always letters from home as everybody needed. Yeah. So that was my big thing, and I think god that stamps weren't what the price that they are today <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know that we i could today you got to think about it, it's almost a dollar i don't know 75 cents i think to send a letter today so 
uh, if you were doing 10 letters or say four, four or five letters a day, well, and you're making 75 cents an hour, how do you, you weren't going to, yeah. So, yeah, there was that to do. And then, so were you guys like dating or were you married? I, no, we were dating. Um, I, but I was 16. Yeah. And then graduated in 68. So we were, I was dating and I knew all of the guys. They were all hung out together. They were friends. So yeah, the war was very, very close in mind to me. And, um, like I said, I always kept in contact of them. Yeah. And then, and then Papa over over the years he remained with all those guys. Oh. And then, yeah. what was your occupation during the wartime? I became a uh, I became a worked in an, as a nurse in the nursing. Yeah. And what about Papa? He became a, an engineer. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And then you didn't have any kids. Obviously, you were sixteen. Right. I hope not. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. That's all. Okay. That's why.